Hey everybody, I'm Sam Newdeck. I am 29 years old and uh, I am going to be changing what I do in my life. And I don't know, I felt like I should record a video uh, and as kind of like the first step to documenting that journey. Um, it, it, it's been difficult to make this choice. Um, because it means a lot of scary things. It means I'm going to have to down downsize my marketing agency. It means I'm going to have to put more effort into other sides of that business. And it means I'm going to have to start an, a, a second business. And it's going to take a lot of effort. But currently, as I sit, and I'll be real honest with you, I'm, um, I'm unable to pay my utilities this month. I'm unable to pay my rent this month. My car broke down a couple weeks ago and I had to scrap it. Uh, and I have bills for the business that are due that are just barely being covered by the uh, income generated through it. And so personally, I'm not even getting a paycheck this month. Um, and it's been kind of rough, just uh, me and my girlfriend, she's been working a lot trying to supplement um, for food and, and that kind of stuff so we can take care of our basic needs um, and so it's been it's been rough um, I never thought I'd be th at this point in my life because I've been here before there was a time in my life where I it, it, and it's nothing like before uh, when I say I've been here before it's like I'm on the verge of homelessness like I'm at the bottom of my bank account like I'm at that 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 moment where you know, no family or, or man ever hopes he's at, um, because it just, it weighs on you. You, you do your freaking darndest and do your best and, and things just continue to fall apart and, um, life happens, life happens, but it's okay. Like I'm happy. I'm joyous. I'm, I'm excited for what the future holds because when one door closes, another door opens. And I think God has a really cool plan for each of us. One thing that he's been putting on my heart and on my uh, conscience as I've been thinking about the future and what the next steps are, I want to be able to spend more time with my kids. I want to be able to pay off debt and get out of this situation that I'm in right now. It's not anywhere I wanted to be. It's something I've been working very hard against, um, but it, unfortunately circumstances uh, with COVID and with uh, a recent divorce and... Um, multiple like scenarios like my car breaking down and things like that it's like life is just crushed would have crushed me normally however I feel like this is a good thing that God is doing something what good in my life and he's definitely though my circumstances my uh, life as far as everyone else can tell is falling apart around me um I have a faith and I have a hope and I have a future because I know that this isn't the end. And so, that being said, here's what I've decided is going to be the next move for my life. I'm going to start documenting this process, which is why I'm creating this video mostly for myself, to be honest with you. I don't know if I'll ever post this, but I'm doing this because I want to live off grid and I want to become a missionary of sorts. I think it's very important that we not only as entrepreneurs work to help others, but we work for a higher purpose. And I have found in my life that the God of the Bible and Jesus Christ have been amazing. The Lord has transformed my life and I didn't always understand what his will was. <clears throat> but as I've been studying the scriptures recently and I've been looking deeper into it, trying to understand, you know, the direction for my life and, and what is God doing with all these, uh, you know, circumstances, trying to make sense of these circumstances. Because, I mean, honestly, how do you make sense of COVID? How do you make sense of the world being flipped upside down? You have to go somewhere that has absolute answers. And I find that in the scriptures. And what I found uh, is that God doesn't want our efforts. He doesn't want our money. He doesn't want our time. He doesn't want our anything, really. The only thing he really wants from us is our hearts. He wants our devotion. 
um, that's it. Just for us to willingly accept who he is and, and follow what he's said is good. And you'll find when you do, it is good. What I've found is that as I look into this and understand it more, that I've been working in my business for the wrong reasons. I've always said, look, God is going to use me, but first he's going to help me build this business so that I can get out of debt so that I can then then spread the gospel, so that I can then be more open about my faith. But the reality is, it's just like anything in your life. If you're not doing it today, are you really going to do it in the future when some goal or some achievement gets hit? I don't think so. I think that, you know, they say that wealth brings out a man's natural character. And if your character today is to spend, spend, spend on everything you have and want and desire, then when the more money you have, the more you're going to spend, the more things you're going to have, the more you're going to still feel unfulfilled. And if you are the type of person that gives and gives to others, the more money you have, you're going to belittle yourself and give to others. It just brings out your character. And so it's important before you go anywhere else in your life that you be a good steward of your character. A good steward of your character is more important than being monetarily successful. It's more important than having things or having relationships or having authority or whatever, recognition, if that's what you're seeking. Having a strong moral character and having a hope and a faith in something that is bigger and greater than yourself is so much better. So with that being said, again... I've, I've decided that I'm going to go and live an off-grid lifestyle. I am tired. As a digital marketer, I am sick of the technology ruining this world. Now, don't get me wrong. I love marketing. I will still be doing marketing. We still will be build, building amazing, killer websites for our clients and trying to get the best results out there. That's not going to change. That's just who I am and what I do. I love seeing those transformations and changes. But here's what we're going to do on the side. We're going to build up a ministry. We're going to teach people through the idea of going back to the basics in nature, right? Going back to the basics in being able to homestead, being able to provide your own food source, being able to uh, live off the grid and provide your own self-sustained uh, ability to provide for you and your family and survive in, in any scenario, any economy, we're going to be teaching that alongside teaching how it's important to get back to the truth, to get back to absolutes in our lives. We live in a world where everything is relative, right? And pseudoscience has said that everything is relative, and we can prove that because black holes and scientific theory and blah, 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 blah. Guys, that's not what the Bible says, right? And, and there has to be a standard of absolute truth somewhere. And I'm not saying it has to be the Bible for you. All I'm saying is that you, as an individual, have to have a standard of what you say is right and what you say is wrong. And find a, a, a solid grounding in that in order for you to find stability in your life. In order for you to find peace and bring that harmony and balance back into your soul. As I've been preparing for this and trying to understand what God wants me to do as far as uh, the ministry aspect of this, if we're going to teach people how to uh, get out of their 9-to-5 jobs and build a sustainable income so that they can have the time, financial, and location freedom to go live off-grid and build a self-sustained lifestyle for themselves based on, on, on good principles, ethical business models, and, and uh, knowledge of agriculture, horticulture, that kind of stuff. How do we also teach them how to leave the, 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 the trap of philosophical um, nine to five? You know what I mean? The, the spirituality that has destroyed our nation because we, okay, get this. We, we call ourselves a Christian nation, right? We're the United States of America. And most Christians, I mean, most, I would say most people don't claim that the United States is a Christian nation anymore, even though um, 
we have a lot of people who profess to be Christians. I believe 98, 99% of the American church is corrupt. I believe it's invaded. I believe it's uh, full of false teachers and, and baby Christians and people who don't really understand what they believe. And they're being led astray all over the place. And it's, it's honestly, it's a tragedy. It's a real freaking tragedy. Um, with that being said, why is that happening? Because pastors and shepherds and teachers, people who are supposed to be taking care of the word of God and teaching the truth, we've left those values. And even the spiritual leaders, the pastors and whatnot, they've left those values and they're compromising and joining, you know, uh, new thought processes like this new age movement and the uh, new apostolic movement, the Pentecostal movement. Like there's, the, the, many of these beliefs are rooted in scripture, but there's little twists in it that make it the untruth. And that's what's causing the breakdown of spirituality in, in our churches. We've allowed too much of the corruption to get in. And side note, this is what happened in the early church with uh, Roman Catholicism. When, when uh, uh, Constantine saw the vision in the sky and made everybody become Christians, you know, the pagans and everybody else were integrated into the church. And the church tolerated it and turned into what is today the modern Catholic church, which I think is so far removed to, from real uh, Christianity, from what the Bible teaches. It's, if, I'm not saying that Catholics aren't saved. Uh, I'm just saying the beliefs are way off, okay? And you need to really look into what you're, what you're looking at. But the point is, look how society has crumbled. People are looking for answers. People need a hope and a vision for the future. And look, if you're a Christian, you have that. I'm a Christian. I have that. And uh, not only do we have that, but we have individual passions and reasons for uh, who, you know, being. We have a purpose. We don't have to be told by society and by propaganda what to do with our lives, right? We only have to answer to one person in the end, and that's God. We only have to please one person, and that's God. I had a high school uh, chapel speaker uh, come in and give a small sermon once, and the biggest thing I took away from that sermon was that and this is way back when I was in, I think, middle school. He said, uh, nothing else matters when it comes to life. If you want to make it real simple, if you want to simplify everything the Bible says, if you want to simplify everything into one simple rule for life, it is this, that nothing else matters but God. And if you take that mindset first, whoa, that changes how you act, right? That changes everything. If God comes first, if nothing else matters but what he says, then that means I have a direction for my life. I have a game plan. I have a standard by which everything can fit in the line. And if you read the Bible and you understand that standard, you understand God's will and plan and the overarching goal there and get salvation, get wisdom, it makes so much sense and it works. And I want to... And this is what the patriarchs, and this is what the, the, the long-standing evangelical Protestant movement has stood on when it comes to the Bible, is that the Bible is infallible. They, they, you, it is the complete and total word of God. So it provides an absolute. If you don't have an absolute, how can you make any choice in life? All choices are, are, are relative. All reasons for being are relative. You can make up whatever you want, you know, and that's what we're seeing in society. People just deciding, I'm going to be this, I want to be that, I want to be this, I want to be that. And it doesn't make any sense mentally, psychologically. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's tearing apart uh, the, the, everything to do with our, 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 our world. And we're plunging into chaos, and it's no wonder why there's so much false news. There's no wonder why there's so many people seeking answers and not finding any definite reason and so they come to the conclusion that there is no definites right there is no absolutes i can't find the truth where is it all right so let me quit my rant let me quit my rant here because i'm getting a little draggy
if you're unhappy with your job, if you're unhappy with your life, if you realize that the future is not some, you're not gonna be able to depend on the government or your employees or anything like that. If you realize that the only person that can make a change and make a difference for you is you, then you'll see the value in living a self-sustained lifestyle. You'll see the value in having a solid foundation and absolutes in your life. And I think that you will also see the things that I see when it comes to the way the world works and the way that you can, I don't want to use the word transcend, uh, but maybe remove yourself from the pressures of the world by having a set of absolutes, by having a moral standard, and by having a faith in something bigger than yourself. Now, obviously, I'm a strong advocate for Christianity. True Christianity. I, I almost don't even want to call myself a Christian. I just want to say I'm a Christ follower. I, I'm a, I believe uh, the words of, of Scripture. <laughs> I don't know how to... I'm a follower of the way. Let's go back to first century church. You know, I'm of the way. Because um, saying I'm a Christian, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed these days, to be honest with you. And that shouldn't be the case. Shouldn't be the case here in America. Shouldn't be the case anywhere in the world. Let's get off our high horse. Let's do something. And this turned into more of a sermon than, than a, an informative video about what I'm doing with my life. But that's, that's important because God's more important than what I'm doing. God's more important than what I'm doing here, right? I'm probably going to get it wrong. I always do. But, you know, who doesn't? He doesn't. So I hope this brings some cheer to your life. Um, I hope you understand... Uh, why I'm creating this video and I'm just trying to document this process. My goal is to uh, get a job here. I need a job. You got a job for me? I need remote work. I need to be able to work remotely for you on a part-time basis and earn a decent wage. Um, I have a lot of skills that can, that can, that can help um, that are worth that time and money and, and, and whatever hassle setting it up. Okay, uh, I own a marketing agency. If you're a business owner and you need more leads for contracting home mortgages, we're killing it for home mortgages. 84 leads a month on average for one client. We're killing it. We're bringing in so much business. So if you know somebody in that area, that would also help us achieve this goal. My first step is to get a remote income. And that's why I've been building a marketing agency for years now. Um, that's part of the goal. The other goal is I got to pay off debt. I've got two kids. I'm divorced now. I've got two kids. Now. I got to take care of and make sure their well-being is is their future is secure. And that's what this business is also about. Not only is it about helping other people, it's about helping my kids succeed in the future to get out of for me to get out of debt to be able to uh, give them the things that they need from from a dad who's not there all the time. It's a tragedy that I don't get to be there all the time. It's not what I wanted at all. Um, but doing my best moving forward, they're one of my top priorities. And um, I want them to be able to have absolutes in their life. I want them to be able to see an alternative lifestyle uh, and know that everything that they experience in the world doesn't have to be stressful. It doesn't have to be something that you have feel pressured in. Right? Pressure comes from all angles at all times, no matter where you go. And so how do you relieve the anxiety and the, the, the confusion over not knowing the future? You know somebody who does, who knows the future. You know somebody who has the truth, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you find him in the pages of Scripture. And that's what I want my kids to see. That's what I want everybody to see. I want everybody to see that, that we have all these expectations for how to live our lives. Is it crazy that I'm looking to like buy a piece of land and just homestead on it and have two or three families come, come live in different corners of it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, a normal person wouldn't do that. 
is it wrong? No, it's not. Absolutely, it's absolutely not wrong. It's actually a, just a different lifestyle, and it's okay. Like the Amish have their own lifestyle. You know, people who live in the high rises in the city have a different lifestyle than those people who live in the hills in the country and raise cattle. You know, <laughs> it's every everybody has a different lifestyle, a different way of doing things. And when you open your eyes to those perspectives, you the colors of life just come alive. They really do. Not only that, but if you pile on top of that perspective an absolute truth, an absolute faith in in what is good, <coughs> the Bible, um, <coughs> truth, <coughs> God, um, those things, when added to a broader perspective, open up an amazing thing for you in your relationship with God. What it does is it frees you of the anxiety like I've been talking about. The anxiety and the fear of what's going to happen to me. What is my purpose? What do I do? How how anything is possible. Look, it says in the, in the, in the it's either Psalms or Proverbs. It says, uh, the man plans his ways, but the Lord establishes his steps, right? So that means we can plan all sorts of things for our life, but God is going to lead us on every single step. doesn't mean that every step is going to work out the way we thought, right? I think when it comes to your life, if you're wondering, what should I do with my life? What is the purpose of it? I think it is this. And this is what I've come to the conclusion for my own life. It's that God cares about people, right? The whole reason he wrote that book, the whole reason he sent his son was so that people could know him. People could experience him and that relationship could be made right. So if that's who our God is and he is good and he is the one who set up a a, a truth of what is right and wrong in a way that is righteous, and he showed us what way is wicked, then it would only behoove us to follow what that God would say. I think that when we do such and we take we do it in faith. It may not, it doesn't have to make sense because think about it. If, if God is so infinitely big that he created all things we know and put set all things into motion and is able to discern and create in all these different things, then isn't he too big for us to truly comprehend, right? It becomes a lifelong pursuit. It becomes a passion. And we, when you have that sort of relationship with God, when you view him in such a grandiose manner, you know, um, yet keep that personal friendly aspect, you realize that God is not, not out to get you. God's not out to uh, watch people suffer. In fact, he's working very hard the other way. But he's not going to... A loving God isn't going to intervene and, and force people to do things, you know, his way. He's going to wait for them to choose and respond. And that's why, it's, that's why it's such a beautiful thing. Grace, forgiveness of your sins is free, completely free. Like, I'm a marketer. Like, we like free things, right? Free, free, free. It is free. But just like many offers, when people pick up the free thing, it takes work. It takes work. Salvation is free. But it takes you admitting in your heart that you're not it on a stick <laughs> and that uh, you do make mistakes. But it's okay because God has provided a way of salvation through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when you believe that he's done that for you and you truly believe that, he changes you. He changes you in your heart. He changes you in your mindset. He changes you in your way of thinking. And in fact, it says that he even indwells you through his Holy Spirit. That all happens at salvation when you make that choice. And then you have the ability to overcome the world. That's what I've been talking about this whole time. This standard of absolutes, this getting away from traditionalism, this 
this industrial age mindset of the baby boomers. Like it's not a bad thing, right? But look what where our society is at. Something has to change. It worked for a time. Something has to change. And I'm saying it's not society, it's not our government, it's not any of these other things. What needs to change is our attitude towards God and our individual hearts. And we can't make that change ourselves. We can't make any effort. You can't have, okay, I hate these churches that have breakthrough moments. Like, let's get all emotional for several weeks and then like, finally invoke enough uh, uh, pain and, and, and ideology to make a change in our lives. That's psychology, that's self-help, that's, that's Tony Robbins in church form. We can't do it on our own. We cannot do anything on our own. We cannot change ourselves. We cannot change our sin nature on our own. That is something that God and God alone does. And he does it through salvation through the continued work of his Holy Spirit in our hearts. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't accept salvation and become a great, wonderful person. In fact, life gets pretty darn tough. Uh, Christ said that we would face many persecutions uh, if we choose to follow him because they persecuted Christ. He was a perfect man and they killed him. That's hard. That's, Christianity isn't easy. And if, it, if anyone tells you it is, they're liars. If anyone tells you that it'll bring you prosperity and the most happy life, they're liars. It's not what Christ said. It's not what the Bible says. What does it promise, though? It promises true peace and true joy. Not happiness, health, wealth, an enjoyable life even, but joy and peace. That means in the midst of persecution, in the worst of all trials, you will know in your heart that there is a hope that there is a truth, that there is an absolute standard, that there is a way that is right and a way that is wrong, and that there is a God who orchestrates it all and is doing that work in you and in the world. That is something that can give you peace through all things because God makes several promises. I've been homeless before, and it was not fun. It was only for a month, <laughs> but because I can't stand it. I can't, I'm not the type of person who quits. I don't quit. I don't quit on nothing. You know, that's maybe my country roots coming out saying, don't quit, son. But seriously, you, you don't quit. You keep going no matter what. And that's really hard when you're dealing with stress and pain and anxiety and difficult issues. And what I'm telling you right now is I'm making this change in my life uh, personally for me, but for the benefit of everybody around me. And I'm taking a stand to share with you why. To share with you what's the reasoning. Because it's so powerful and I found it's been so truthful and so freeing to know that there's an absolute. To know that there's a purpose for my life. And to know that these things I've been talking to you about, about God and about salvation are true. And it shatters all the perspectives. I can look at the world. None of the news bothers me anymore because I look at it and I go, yep, well, I read that in the Bible. Yep, that's happening. I, that was in Revelation. Oh, that was in Daniel. Oh, that's happening now. And Jesus talked about that. Guys, the Bible provides so many answers. Like, you're sick of the fake news? Go read the Bible. It's, it'll predict what the, fake, what the news is going to tell you. It'll predict the sway and changes of countries and societies and ideologies. It's all there. And some of it, most of it's been fulfilled. And the parts that aren't are coming to true right now. And continuing to come true the closer we get to what the Bible calls the return of Christ. And guys, this is the time you need to take it seriously. Everybody is taking their lives as a joke. You know, their lives as a video game. Let's hack our life. Let's hack the system. Let's get rich quick. Let's live our best lives now. Uh, blah, 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 blah. This world isn't meant to be easy. This world isn't meant to be. And if it is for you, maybe something um, is wrong uh, and you need to check it out a little bit more because you're going to find that at one point you're going to be empty if you don't have this peace, if you don't have this joy I'm talking about. So this has been a super long video uh, going on a half an hour and I'm going to stop it right at the 30 minute mark. So I got 10 seconds. Um, Sam Newdeck.
We're going to start an off-grid lifestyle. We're going to start preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to uh, try and make a difference for the kingdom of God right here on earth. And I hope that you can join and support me in this effort. Thank you.